Hello and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lursey and today I'm going to show you how to use the Merge to HDR Pro feature in uh, Photoshop CS6. It's also in CS5. might even be in some of the older ones. I didn't start using it till CS5. And uh, it's essentially the same in both, but uh, CS6 has a, a slight improvement to it that for me makes a huge difference in the results. So I'm going to be using CS6 on this particular tutorial. Now I'm assuming if you're watching this you probably already know basically what HDR photography is, is high dynamic range. It's uh, you're basically taking an image and, and stretching out what you could normally get uh, as far as highlights and, and shadows and it kind of gives it a, depending on how you do it, some almost a uh, unrealistic look but it's, it's, it's very cool and um, I'm going to kind of run through and show you how to do it. The What, what you're going to do um, starting with at the photography end, uh, which is kind of a whole different tutorial by itself, but um, you're going to go through and create a series of images. Uh, this shot here is basically at the correct exposure, and I did a couple of lighter ones and a couple of darker ones, always keeping my uh, aperture the same, and uh, just adjusting the shutter speed to make it lighter and darker. And uh, if you're new to HDR photography, there's tons of uh, tutorials on YouTube you can watch that will kind of talk you through the, the shooting end of it. I'm going to kind of show you once you've done the photography part here how to actually put them together in Photoshop. So what I've got is my five images here. I'm in Bridge. I'm going to do a Command A and just highlight all of these uh, so I have them all selected. Then all you're going to do is go up here to Tools, Photoshop, merge to HDR Pro. And it's going to take a second to run through this, so I'll go ahead and uh, just speed up the process and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the computer has done its part and put this thing together and you can see it leaves you with a very uh, mid-tone looking image. It's all grays. There's not a lot of black or light in it. Um, it just kind of has a very muddy type look. Which if you just did this and took a look at, at the this being the final output, you'd probably say, eh, not interested in it. But um, the magic happens when you start messing around with all these sliders over here. And you can experiment just trying all these different things. Um, that affect how, how it looks. But what I uh, would recommend you probably start with is some of these presets up here. If you click on right up here, oh, make it slide down so we can see all of them. Ooh, I lost it. Uh, if you look right here, there's uh, all these presets that, and a lot of them are new, like uh, City Twilight, the uh, RC5, Scott 5. Um, a lot of these were there before but they've added a few new ones and what these will do when you click on these is it will go ahead and affect the image giving it uh, a whole bunch of different looks. Where is this realistic? And it depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I really like the Scott 5. Click on that. Give it a second to work and there you go. It gives it a very cool look. Um, and then you can go back in. That'll get you close. And then go in and, and change uh, things, some of these different sliders. One of the ones that I'll uh, usually mess around with is sometimes I'll do this edge smoothness. And when I click on it, you'll see that it kind of takes a lot of these lines. If we look back in the back, these really sharp lines, you can click that edge smoothness and it smooths them out. You may like that look, you may not. Generally when I do do that, I'm going to come back to the strength and bring it up a little bit to kind of compensate for that. So uh, sometimes I'll just leave it on, sometimes I'll, I'll hit the button and bring it up. But you kind of, it varies from image to image. But you can play around with that. I'm going to turn it off in this case and uh, bring that down to about 50. And uh, that's pretty much the look I'm looking for. So once I have that like that, I will go ahead and hit OK and let it work again. And it will basically have those files merge together, apply that preset that we just did and give us the uh, the final image. There you go. 
and you can see that that uh, pretty much gives you a, a really nice looking image right off the bat. You can always, of course, tweak it, go into levels or any other type thing you want to do to uh, adjust it and, uh, even further. But it's a very cool uh, technique, and it's a, a nice feature of Photoshop that I think doesn't get used all that often. So if you haven't tried it in the past, go out and uh, shoot some things and bring them in and try merging them to HDR and see how it goes. So. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Otherwise, check back for more tutorials in the future. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.